All right, so today is June 9th, uh, 2019, and uh, this is this week's update on the electric GTM that I'm building. So if you haven't uh, been watching, uh, let's catch you up to speed real quick. Uh, what we have here is a Factory 5 GTM chassis. So uh, the, the frame here, a uh, bunch of aluminum panels still haven't been put together, it's got some time. Um, the body is uh, suspended up there, the, of course the most of the body, and then you've got the hood and front, uh, front clamshell. And what makes this a little different than most is uh, she's going to be electric powered. So uh, I've sourced a um, Tesla drive unit. It's the Model S P85 uh, rear wheel drive unit, 400 kilowatt. Uh, which evidently goes, you know, like equates to about 536 horsepower. They say torque is going to be somewhere around 7 to 800, so it should be um, an interesting, fun little car uh, when it's all said and done. So anyways, uh, that's kind of where we're at right this second, and, or the summary up till now, I guess. The update for this week uh, actually made some pretty good progress on a few things. So these guys, that you see here kind of brown colored with the black tops so that's part of the battery system uh, in this case parts of a chevy volt uh, battery setup there's going to be 10 total modules of uh, one two three four different sizes um, they kind of got broken up if you go back and see the other videos you'll see what they used to look like but i had to split them up in order to get them to fit in the various uh, spots inside the car so uh, this week I'm going to just kind of outline what I did and where. So start at the front. Uh, this battery, it isn't, it isn't planted or mounted or anything like that, uh, but it's one of the, I'll call it an 18 inch module, the second biggest. It measurements and hood and everything say, or to the hood say that it should fit just fine. As you can see it's pretty much even with the top of this aluminum panel. The aluminum panel follows, for the most part, the interior contour of the hood. Um, there will be some vents in the hood. That'll be uh, these black guys. Obviously, they still need to be uh, cut out, um, fiberglass in, and um, of course, it'll all be painted when it's all said and done. So the clearance is going to be really, really tight, but that's OK. Um, at this point, I really don't have any other place to put the batteries. Um, we're really just uh, stuffing them wherever we can, or wherever I can. So anyways, that guy's going to be mounted there. I don't have a bracket for it yet, but uh, it's in spot. Got a battery here. It's uh, under the center console, or like the radio area. Um, it's mounted at an angle, but the reason that is, uh, is that there's just not enough room here to really fit it. So. What I've had to do is I'm going to modify the aluminum panel to kind of uh, bow out around it. It's really it's really close, um, just about a half inch to an inch um, on either side. So pretty easy, um, you know, modification to make fit. I did have to cut out the factory bracket for the shifter that used to go there. I'll probably clean that up a little bit better um, before I'm done. But I did have to cut it out to get it to fit. Obviously, I'm not going to have a shifter, so uh, it's kind of irrelevant that it even be there. So it's gone. Got another, oh, that's, so that's a, a 12 inch battery module. And then there's another 12 inch battery module here. So with this guy, I had to uh, fabricate these long brackets that go forward and back on both sides, clearly. I uh, bolted them in with some stainless hardware. The one thing I'm trying to do is make these so if I need to get to them, they're accessible. Uh, this one will be accessible from underneath the car. Um, that one is actually will be accessible uh, with that side panel removed on the passenger side uh, compartment. Back behind the seats, so this panel represents the kind of the rear firewall, if you will. Um, normally, uh, this is where the fuel tanks would have gone. Um, the fuel tanks would have been sourced from a Chevy Corvette, like a C5, no fuel tanks, so using batteries in, in spot of that. These are 
uh, the same on either side, both 8 inch modules. So anyways, those guys are bracketed down. What I've done um, to, to hold these in place is instead of like, well, aside from that front one, uh, but the rest, instead of like trying to reinvent the wheel, uh, you'll see the bolts and what look appear to be like factory fabricated brackets. Well, it's because they are. What I've been doing is this is the um, factory, like the Chevy Volt, the, pa the pad that the batteries sit on and I'm cutting out the sections here. So just whatever section I need, and then uh, bolting that, attaching that to um, either the frame or um, in some cases, the uh, rails that I've bolted to the frame, and then using the factory attachment point. I wasn't completely sure uh, how secure they would be, but this one you can see is sitting uh, straight up and down and it's really firm. It's not going anywhere. I did build a little aluminum brace. I put some uh, fuel line on either side of it just to kind of give it a little bit of cushion or padding so the vibration doesn't uh, wear into the plastic. Uh, but that's there just to hold it up a little bit. It really, I'm not even sure if it's necessary, but I'm going to leave it just because. So that's the, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, uh, five total batteries so far. The other five are down here. So you can see there's some of the bigger ones are still uh, to be placed in the car. Um, these two here are the 20 inch modules, another 18 inch module, 12 inch module here, and another 12 inch uh, module here. So back to the chassis. The three bigger ones that are remaining, so the 18, or uh, it's close to 18, and the two 20 inch modules are going to go um, vertically in this area. So this is where the, the LS motor would have been uh, bolted to. Instead, I'm going to build um, a bracket that goes across here. And then uh, much like the center console battery, they're going to be standing straight up and down. The two bigger ones on the outside and then the shorter one in the middle. And um, like I said, I haven't got that far, but um, measurements wise, they will fit no problem. You, you know, when, once the drive unit's in place. So we should be good there. Just a matter of a little bit of engineering to, um, you know, fit those guys and make sure they work. So that's the three biggest ones. And then there's two of the second to smallest, the 12 inch modules. Um, one of those is going to go in this hole inside here. So between the driver and passenger side foot boxes, we know it fits. I know it fits. It's uh, we've I test fitted a, a box basically that I cut out of cardboard that's essentially the same size. Um, there's only one problem: is this car is going to have AC. Um, Factory Five uses um, a kit. I can't remember the name of the company, but uh, it's, they do a lot of classic car, like retrofit AC st uh, stuff. So anyways, the, the evaporator core and the air box, um, that all sits normally right in this spot. Um, I don't have that yet. It was a uh, part that was on back order whenever they delivered the kit. So um, talked to Factory 5 this past week. They are sending it out. Well, they actually already mailed it on uh, Friday, today's Sunday. So hopefully I'll get it um, early this coming week, um, it's it'll fit. I'm gonna make it work. It's just a matter of um, I need that part here so that I can check fitment and clearances um, before. And then so that leaves still one more uh, 12 inch module, which a couple different places. I'm trying to gain the front and rear axles. Um, maybe it might fit up on top of uh, the Tesla drive unit, it'll be probably the last battery that's installed. So it's either going to go like sit kind of in this area on top of the, the hardware or the bracket for the drive unit once it's fabricated, or something that's not attached to the car yet. There's a little um, a frame piece that sticks out the rear of this. It normally would have went around the Porsche transaxle um, that's you know set up for the rear wheel drive on this thing. But um, worst comes to worst, uh, that small battery will 
end up just kind of in this general vicinity right here. Um, so speaking of weight, um, obviously we're trying to keep it all uh, as close to the center of the car and as low as possible um, for a number of reasons, handling, performance, traction, stability, the whole nine yards. But I went and got a set of scales. I talked to him, talked about them last time. A company called Proform makes these. And um, so here's that setup. Right now, it's sitting on top of the four scales. Let's try and get some video here without touching the car. Uh, so right the second, we're at 703 pounds. The chassis by itself, with just a, a couple of small aluminum pieces that don't weigh much of anything, um, was 365 pounds. So we've not, now we've added some batteries, and we're at 703, 704. I think it's jumping back and forth a little bit. Um, don't pay too close attention to the left right splits on this. Um, the, the jack stands are just a little bit uneven, so left to right is a little off. But uh, front to rear, as you can see, I've got the jack stands pretty much even with where the rear axles will be. Thus, the, um, the front to rear split should be, uh, should be pretty accurate. Um, so right now we're at like 56%, is that 56% front? and 45% rear, uh, which is kind of surprising. Um, that's going to change, obviously, once we get the drive unit. Uh, it weighs 300 pounds, and then those other three or four batteries that are going back here. Um, but I'm kind of pretty excited to see that the weight isn't just like skyrocketing on this thing. Um, I can't imagine uh, the body weighing too terribly much once it's all put together. Um, you know, Factory 5 says these things should weigh 2,400 to 2,500 pounds uh, with an LS motor and the Porsche uh, G50 transaxle. Um, you know, hopefully I'd like to see this thing around the same, um, you know, maybe within 100 pounds or so. Um, so we'll, we'll see what happens. Uh, a couple other little updates. Um, this isn't its final resting position, just kind of sitting here for now, but uh, the DC to DC converter, um, this came out of a Chevy Volt also. They are air-cooled, and um, the way it works in the Chevy is the uh, they use like cabin um, cabin air to cool this thing. Um, you know, I didn't have the Chevy Volt uh, fan or anything like that. So what I've done is I've 3D printed um, some ducting here. So big duct. There's two uh, eight, uh, 80 millimeter. Uh, high flow fans that are, you can kind of see take this apart. Uh, the two fans there from Noctua. They're kind of, you know, normally like computer fans, but uh, in this case they're high flow, so they should, should do the, the job. Got the rest of the duct there, it goes into the converter, and then the outlet duct there. So the idea is um, pull in, you know, cool air from inside the cabin just above the driver's feet. Uh, and then an exhaust it, it's probably a little bit warmer uh, on top of the passenger's feet. Um, you know, I figured somebody would be driving this without a passenger versus having a passenger in it all the time. Um, plus, I don't think it's going to be too big of a difference. Um, you know, with cars going to have AC and everything. Um, so anyways, I think that's it's kind of where it's at right now. Um, I've kind of held off on some of these aluminum panels. Um, obviously it's a big step, but uh, it was important to me to start fo focusing on the electric car portion of this um, to, um, you know, get this stuff in place, um, you know, because like, obviously I'm going to have to, you know, reform a few of those aluminum panels uh, just for fitment's sake. I don't think there's anything else. I think that's it for now. Um, you know, I wish I had more <laughs> done on this thing, obviously, but uh, it's just one of those things that I'm kind of having to uh, figure it out as I go. It's not something that there's, um, you know, a, a preformed like plan on 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 building this thing at all, any way, shape, or form. Um, so yeah, it's just taking a lot of time to to figure it out, make sure it's right, and uh, move on. In the meantime. Um, you know, go back and look at any of my previous videos if you wanted to learn any more about 
how the Chevy Volt batteries uh, came apart, how I've modified them uh, to fit um, even in these small spaces. Uh, and if you have any other questions, you know, leave them in the comments below. Uh, you know, do me a favor, share this with your friends, just trying to uh, get a little bit more um, awareness out on the electric car stuff. It's not something that a whole lot of people have done. Um, a whole lot of people are uh, timid about these sorts of things. It's really not that difficult. A lot of the information is already out there. So if you can, you know, I, I'm just a car guy myself, I, you know, learned on, you know, turbo cars and stuff like that and just figuring it out as I go. Anyways, um, yeah, look it up. Um, have Instagram, Electric GTM, and Twitter, and obviously Facebook as well. Don't forget to uh, subscribe and hit the notification bell yourself.